the Retro Reel. What's up, everybody? Jason here, aka Multimedia J, and welcome to the Retro Reel. It just so happens I'm coming up on five years of being involved here on YouTube. Yeah, interestingly enough, I've been doing this stuff for the past five years or so. I first got started with making videos in the fall of 2006. Now here we are, fall of 2011. So with this milestone coming up, what I'm going to do here is make a retro reel out of the old rookies, rookie mistakes that people make in their presentations video that I made back during the days of my old instructional series back in 2006. It was easily the best video I made out of that series, so I figured why not retro reel it. I've been wanting to do this for quite some time, but I was saving it for something special, like a five-year milestone. In any, any, in any event, Back when I first started getting involved here on YouTube, I was subscribed to some I was subscribed to some tech geeks and some AV geeks and some video geeks and whatnot. Some of them were doing how-to videos and I kind of jumped on the bandwagon for a while and did some how-tos on multimedia-like topics and things along those lines. I kind of I kind of got sick of it though and I transitioned over to more over-the-shoulder type tech videos like where someone just films them someone just films themselves tinkering with a computer or a car or something along those lines and basically what that does is it kind of changes how everything works obviously and it also kind of removes that whole classroom feel to the videos with how-to videos you kind of feel like you're sitting in a classroom getting lectured to but with over-the-shoulder type tech videos like what I do now it's more like going over a friend's house and watching them fiddle around with a car or a computer or a project or something like that a lot more informal and relaxing and it goes well with a hobby like making YouTube videos videos and whatnot. After all, this is supposed to be fun, isn't it? Why should you know, why should someone feel like they're sitting in a classroom at like a new job or something going through orientation or safety training or job training and you know how those videos get those cheesy safety training and other training videos where the people involved are trying to be entertaining but it's just not working so I didn't want the videos I was working on to be like that. In any event, this video is definitely going to be dated uh, it was made in 2006, so there's quite a bit of dated information. Matter of fact, this video is going to be hilariously dated. It's funny to watch a video like this all these years later and see just how far presentation technology has come in five years. Like, for example, I spent a significant amount of time talking about the resol issues related to the resolution difference that existed at the time between CRT monitors and CRT televisions. Because that mattered if you were going somewhere where you'd have to put PowerPoint slides on a TV. It's pretty funny to watch now, and it really makes you think of just how far technology has come in the last five years. Anyways, this was easily the best instructional video that I ever made in that old series, so feel free to sit back, relax, have a few laughs, and remember, this was made in 2006, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to basically be like something made in 2006. Some of the information will be a little dated, but it's worth a few laughs anyways. So, without further ado, this is Rookie Mistakes People Make in Their Presentations from my old 2006 instructional series. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Technology, audiovisual equipment, presentations, computers, multimedia. This is the show that's about it all. And now, here's Multimedia J. Hello, YouTube crew. I'm Multimedia J, and it is time to get down to business. This episode, we're going to be talking about stupid mistakes that you make that you could possibly make in your presentations. Do not, under any circumstances, do these things. Start taking notes. Roll that beautiful screenshot footage. One of the first mistakes that you can make in the world of presentations is going nuts with your fonts. I remember my first real word processor, Microsoft Works for the Macintosh. I opened that sucker up for the first time and I just went nuts. At my worst, I had my teacher telling me to redo papers where I used literally a different font every paragraph. Once you get over the honeymoon effect of playing around with fonts for the first time, it is best to stick to only a couple for all of your presentations and everything else that you do. A serif font for anything that's being printed on paper, a sans serif font for anything that's going to be displayed on a screen, and an extra large sans serif font for giant titles, block text, signs, etc. My own personal favorites are Verdana, Arial, Times New Roman, and occasionally Impact. 
By and large, if you play around with fonts in a presentation, that really doesn't tell your audience anything other than that you had the time to play around with fonts while you're putting everything together. Keep your fonts simple and to the point to the extent where they don't become a distraction, and you'll have taken your first step in not doing the same stupid stuff that I did in my early days in the world of multimedia. Another idiot mistake that rookies make is when they go to display PowerPoint slides on a television for the first time, and they don't take into account the resolution drop when you go from a computer monitor to a TV. While analog televisions and CRT monitors used with computers may look like very similar devices, the fact remains that they are very, very different, and they display at very, very different resolutions that will directly affect how your PowerPoint slides look when you go from computer to TV. The way to get around this is to use a relatively recent computer when putting your show together that has an S-Video out available on the video card. Use a dual display setup. Have one output going to your computer display and have the other output going to your television through the S-Video out. If your television is too old for S-Video and has the red, white, and yellow uh, places on the back to plug RCA cables in, you can purchase an adapter from an electronics store that'll drop the signal from at the S-Video out port from S-Video down to composite, which can go to the yellow jack on the back of your TV. Some of the uh, video cards may come with adapters built right in, in case you had to go to a television like that. In any event, if you can see your slides on a TV in real time, alongside with the, how they're going to look on the computer, you can make adjustments accordingly. So if by chance your presentation is played over a television, like uh, when, there, no, when, the, when your school or college runs out of projectors, or if you're video conferencing to someone who has a TV on the other side, you won't get burned with this error. I guarantee that this you'll see this mistake affect at least one other person that you work with that doesn't know about this bug if you don't educate them on this beforehand. On the audio side of things, a classic screw-up that newbies make is by adding too much reverb or echo effects when recording sound for the first time. They hear their voice with reverb or echo, and they're like, cool, let's crank that up. Unfortunately, despite how easy it is to come across reverb and echo capability, even Microsoft's sound recorder in Microsoft Windows has an add echo feature built right in, more of these effects does not necessarily make you sound better. For example, in this, this segment of the monologue, I have way too much, much echo, echo on my Can you, Can you understand, understand the words I'm saying? saying? Could you understand anything I was saying back there? Didn't think so. That's what happens when you go overboard with the echo. Now, for too much reverb. This is what happens when you have too much reverb. As you can hear, the volume of the reverb effect is louder than the volume of the original signal. So as you can see, more reverb does not make you sound better either. Even overproduced 80s songs didn't go overboard to the extents that I've just demonstrated with those kinds of effects. If they did, you wouldn't be able to make out a single word that was said or sung. In any event, that's another rookie mistake that you should steer clear of. Use reverb and echo in moderation. Let's move on. <laughs> Being unprepared for stuff can cause us problems in a lot of areas besides multimedia. So why should our presentations be an exception? A lot of novices, if they're not afraid something is going to break, assume that their presentations will always go off without a hitch. That is a very bad assumption to make. We live in an imperfect world. Things are going to break and things are going to go wrong. Though we cannot foresee everything that could possibly go wrong in our presentations, it's always nice to at least have some sort of plan in case something does. Things you can do to try and prevent things from going wrong include try a dry run of your presentation ahead of time with the exact equipment in the exact place that you're going to be giving your show. If that is not available, crank the communication up between, where, between yourself and where you're going to be giving the show, and that should help you out to some extent. The last thing you can do is try to show up at least 15 minutes before showtime and have everything set up 15 minutes ahead of time to make sure everything works. That should give you ample time to fix any last minute issues that may arise before your presentation. Unless you like standing all by yourself in an empty room talking to the walls all the time, your presentation is going to have an audience. Even if they're not right in front of you, somebody is going to be seeing what you're doing here. So it is best to know your audience and tailor your presentation to your audience as best as you possibly can. This will affect a lot of factors, like whether they can understand it, how well they'll understand it and work with it and digest it, and of course, the chances you have of possibly offending someone. In terms of offending people, the same rules apply here as they do in workforce diversity in general. Don't just flap your mouth about anything. 
because you don't know who might be tuning in. Self-perception is very underrated up to and usually including your first presentation, and it's one of our natural handicaps as human beings. Because we can only be in one place at any one time, we can't really watch ourselves to see what we look like to our audience. You'll know what I'm talking about if you ever record yourself on a tape recorder and then play back the tape and say, Dude, do I really sound like that? Or, of course, if you film yourself on, with a video camera and then watch the tape afterwards, you can probably spot some things in your physical behavior that you normally don't notice while you're, while you're actually giving the presentation. It is best to try and see yourself the way that your audience will see you through either of these methods, to try and iron out some things before your presentation. And you'll know a rookie when they haven't done a lot of speaking before when they bring some of these disturbing mannerisms to the table. Always try to find a way to see yourself from the audience's point of view, and that will help you fine-tune your presentations like you wouldn't believe. The last thing I'm going to bring up is very relevant, especially in this day and age. Sometimes with what's out there today, it seems like special effects can carry a show, and I'm happy to report that that is still not the case. Unless you're trying to show off what your system can do or doing a tech demo of some sort, special effects cannot make up for mediocre content. The best thing to remember in situations like this is to always make sure that your content is solid before applying special effects to it, because regardless of what you're trying to show off, your presentation is still going to be presented. Never, ever let special effects make your content take a back burner. Some of these topics that we've gone over will go in more detail in later episodes, but that should get you started for now as far as avoiding rookie mistakes in presentations is concerned. So, what did you think of the show? I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you were seriously taking some notes, because these are stupid mistakes that you shouldn't make in your presentations. This is Multimedia J reminding you that you can lead a horse to water, but a pencil must be led. Have a great morning, evening, afternoon, middle of the night, whatever it is. This is Multimedia J signing off. Now get out there and go make some slideshow sizzle. This is the Generic Announcer, speaking for the Multimedia J Show, an AV geek with too much free time on his hands, YouTube production.